Oh, hey everyone, Pratik here, back again with another video. So this is a really special episode. Today I've been talking to Alexis Ahmed, Akka Hackersploit. He's a great security researcher, YouTuber, content creator, CTO of Hackersploit. So as a security researcher, I truly admire his work and I am obliged to have him with us today. So without talking too much, let's get started. Like in first, let's roll the intro. So first of all, thank you so much for taking time out and joining me on my channel. I am very honored to have you as my guest. Thank you very much for having me. It's a, it's an honor and a pleasure. Yeah. So my first question is to you. Uh, can you please give some quick introduction about yourself, like who you are, what are you doing, uh, how many years of experience in InfoSec and your achievement, especially about content creation, uh, penetration testing, kind of. Right. Um, so my name is Alexis Ahmed. Uh, I work as a penetration tester, uh, more specifically a network pen tester. So I primarily deal with red teaming and uh, stuff like that. So enterprise networks. Um, in, in regards to how many years I've been in InfoSec, I've been in InfoSec professionally for about six or seven years now. Uh, I initially started out as with exactly what I, what I'm doing right now, which was network pen testing. I've also worked various uh, jobs that uh, had to do with uh, pen testing of web applications, web app security, uh, system auditing, um, etc. And I have I have vast experience with the securing enterprise networks, enterprise infrastructure. So that's primarily what I do. Um, as you know, I also run the YouTube channel Hackersploit, and I've been doing that for the last three or four years. And uh, yeah, I primarily do that as a so sort of a side project or a hobby. So yeah. Okay. So thank you for the quick answer. So my second question is, how did you start Hackersploit and what was the purpose and objective of thinking to start teaching ethical hacking and why? Right. So. That's a good question. Uh, th I think I've answered it before, but uh, when I when initially when I started off with uh, YouTube and uh, recording videos and stuff like that, um, uh, the, the the motivation wasn't to to start a channel and to grow it. Uh, I primarily got started with creating videos for YouTube back when I was in university, and uh, the reason being is during one of uh, the programming courses that I was in. Uh, we were actually given an assignment uh, to complete that involved developing a script that would take, you know, user input and uh, and sort of process it. And uh, one of my friends at the time, who was also, uh, you know, with me in the same class, was having an issue with one of the functions that we were supposed to develop. And so he asked me if I could, you know, show him how to uh, how to set up the, the function. And uh, given that at, at that time we were not together, or uh, rather I was at home, uh, I wasn't able to do it via email. So I, I recorded a video and I shared it on YouTube and then I sent him the link and um, it eventually went on to everyone in that class and they watched the video and uh, it was very helpful to them. So uh, again, the thing that struck me was the fact that it was very, very enjoyable to create a video. I really liked doing it. Uh, it was a, it, you know, it, and it helped a lot of people. So that was my introduction to video or content creation. And then, of course, uh, at the time I was getting into InfoSec and I'd already uh, been maybe one year in, in, in the industry. And uh, when I, whenever I would go onto YouTube, when I was trying to, to, to actually solve a problem or I was trying to learn about a specific tool, I would, um, I would go onto YouTube and I would search for videos. Uh, what I realized at the time, this was very early on, is there weren't any videos uh, in regards to InfoSec uh, how to use tools, uh, you know, pen testing, etc. So I decided that I would set up Hackersploit for that, where I would answer or I would make videos that would address these types of questions. For example, how to use Nmap, how to use Metasploit. And that's how I got started. I just started creating videos uh, regarding my own questions firstly, and then through the comments, I was able to get more feedback from the community regarding what type of content they wanted. So that was my introduction and how I got started with Hackersploit. So thank you for creating this channel. And then when I was enter into the field of penmins, I when I started the college, so I heard the term about ethical hacking. So when I go to the YouTube, I know about two or three only live overflow and Hackersploit. So on that days, there are not a many content creator 
content creators available on YouTube. So I mean, kind of your content is very good, and your ad map, your meta exploit, your Wireshark series, your Linux for essentials. That is a I still watching every of your videos. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you very much for the support. It it really means a lot, and it's it's the reason why I personally keep making the videos. Uh, you know, knowing that uh, the videos help in in any way. So I really appreciate that. Okay. So my second question is: Did you think of any other platform than YouTube? Why YouTube? And what do you think about YouTube as a source of learning security? Right. So at, at the time. uh youtube was 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 sort of the only platform that was easily accessible to anyone and the videos could be shared easily so that's why i uh, i went into youtube and at the time as i said it was very easy to get started you just create an account a channel and you can upload videos whereas other video sharing platforms like vimeo uh, after a certain threshold uh, you need to pay a subscription right for storage yeah. so it it was an obvious option to get into that and the other reason why i chose youtube was because i personally in the past had used youtube to learn programming uh and uh, that's where i believe the whole educational aspect of youtube came into place when uh you know there were lots of people making programming videos programming tutorials so i saw it at at the time as a great way to share knowledge and again i wasn't really interested in monetizing the channel or doing anything like that for me it was just a way of sharing knowledge and i think what's happened uh, you know over the last 2 years is we we've actually seen the security uh, the the security sphere on youtube or the security community on youtube grow and foster really really good content creators now with uh, you know different types of content uh, not just focusing on pen testing but other aspects of security where they'd be bug bounty uh, you know linux uh, reverse engineering so i i think youtube that way has been really really great in offering a very easy to access platform not just for the creators but for anyone in the world right because any anyone in the world can access youtube and they can get this really really easily yeah so because our youtube is a very kind of all the people are searching whenever you get stuck they search about like what is a end map so every all most of students going to the youtube so i think it's a really great idea good idea third question is I have heard you get many opportunities to teach at schools and colleges as a professor. So, what is your take on it? Uh, well, I, I I haven't got any requests as a professor primarily because I don't have the the necessary experience, but also because cybersecurity is still a new field in regards to universities and college degrees. It's usually featured in 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 very few courses, even if you do computer science. Uh, I I have, however, got many opportunities to to talk at universities and to sort of give uh, brief lectures there and uh, it's it's been great i really like doing that because uh, the way i see it is uh, university is a great place to learn about uh, where what field you want to get into and so having these lectures these introductory lectures to infosec or pen testing at universities has really helped students understand that you know there are many fields they can get into um so i have been given opportunities to 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 have these lectures at universities and i said the reason i do it is to give the students an introduction because when i was in university there there literally wasn't any of this or any uh, any of the resources we have right now and so you sort of had to find a, a, about it find uh, find out about it through maybe someone else or a peer or a professional so i i'm just really really happy that i'm able to share this knowledge with as many people as possible Okay so that's a great answer so my next question is related to youtube community guidelines so youtube is a nasty when it comes to posting hacking stuff have you faced any such wrath of youtube like any warning strike since you have posted quite a offensive content uh yeah of course i i the, the recent one i got was just a, a few weeks ago the the community guidelines strike Yeah it's it, it's it's been very um sad to see what's what's been happening in regards to the YouTube community guidelines when 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 they first released it I think about 2 years ago I was in support of them primarily because it meant that now content would be much more uh would, would be much uh, would be of much more higher quality and uh, YouTube would start to moderate their content and I I didn't know that it would would also go into educational content which I think YouTube needs to look into even though the cybersecurity uh, community on youtube is is quite small 
you know, in, in, in relation to the others, uh, th- there isn't yeah. a cybersecurity channel on YouTube that has more than a million subscribers. Mm-hmm. I think YouTube uh, at, at its current, uh, you know, moment in time is looking at hacking as, as a bad thing, which again, I can understand why. Uh, they're under a lot of pressure uh, by advertisers to sort of clean up the platform and make sure that nothing illegal is going on. And for every video that I make, there's going to be another person uploading an illegal video showing, you know, how, how to hack uh, private systems or systems that are out on the internet. And um, many, many YouTube content creators in the cybersecurity field have got these warnings and strikes. And uh, what we've realized is that um, YouTube is, is, is doing this almost randomly, which is a bit sad because we don't know what we can and cannot upload. Yeah. If we're told, if, if we are told like, uh, hey, you know, you, you, you can't upload any videos regarding Android hacking, uh, irregardless of, of the context, even though you're doing it on a virtual machine or on a virtual device, then, you know, we, we can work around that. But the problem is that YouTube decides almost on a weekly basis what videos are, 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 are the correct videos and what videos are going to be removed or what videos are going to be striked. So, as I said, I understand why they're doing it, but if they can just set up a you know a set of fixed guidelines that they that they themselves are going to adhere to, then I think all the creators are going to find it much easier to work around that. Yeah, that's what I think. I think you made one video about of YouTube community guidelines also, and I think you got some strike related to CTF walkthrough. This is a really bad thing. Yeah. Yeah, I I just want to add a, a one, one more point there. The, the 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 video that was uh, the video that I was referring to was the try hack me video or one of them, yes. and the reason I got a community guideline strike was because I included the try hack me website in the description section of the video, oh. and 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 that was just a bit shocking to me because th- that site is an educational site. All I'm trying to do is promote it to the community, and I got a strike for that. And then the the second thing is the appeal system. If I send an appeal and I say, this is obviously wrong, I haven't done anything wrong, I'm completely, I mean, you know, I'm in compliance with the guidelines, they, they still haven't responded to that appeal, and I still have that one strike on the channel. So it's really sad. And, and then the last thing is that other people have uploaded TriAcme videos, but their videos don't get striked, right. which is a bit unfair, right? So if they're going to do something, I expect them to do it across the board, but again, at, uh, it, at this point in time, it looks like they're doing it randomly. So uh, it's just something you have to deal with. Okay. So thank you for the answer. So my next question is, have you ever been to India? What do you think about Indian cybersecurity community? Um, at the moment, I haven't been to India, but uh, I, it's, it's definitely somewhere that I want to visit. Of course, given the the the, the pandemic, it's, it's, it's hindered my plan slightly because I was planning to come for B-sides, a few B-sides events in India. Uh, so I'm really, really interested. The cybersecurity uh, community in India is really, really strong, really passionate. It's been growing over the last few years, which is great. Uh, they're producing a lot of good talent. It's just really, really exciting because it's a very passionate community. As I said, it's, uh, it's a growing community and it's good to see that they're having various events uh, I was recently invited to one of the virtual DEF CON events um, that I actually went to, uh, which was in, uh, I think, DEF CON Delhi. 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 Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it was, it was great, you know, to see that there's, there's, there's such a, a, a good um, philosophy of learning and improving skills and tr- trying to learn more and more. It's a really, really dynamic community, and it's I'm very, very excited to see where, where it's going to go. You also gave... Talk to in our conference also, if you know that. Yeah, yeah, I do remember that. So it's, as I said, it's it's great yeah. to see that. ARPCon. Yeah. Yeah. And that will be super it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So my next question is, what do you like to do when you are not hacking? Um, when, when I'm not hacking, I personally love uh, programming or writing scripts, uh, you know, just on a general level, I like working with the web, uh, working on web projects, building new projects in PHP, because uh, I did work for quite a while before I got in, into InfoSec professionally as a full stack web developer. So I still have those skills and I still like working with PHP, but 
in regards to uh, non-technological hobbies, I, I like, I, I like uh, reading. I like a lot of history. I'm a huge fan of history. So I, I primarily am just doing that. Uh, I, I don't really do anything apart from that. Of course, there's, there's going to be st stuff like sports. I'm a huge fan of football, uh, but I'm primarily at the moment just working a, a lot. So I, I don't really have uh, you know, any time to explore any more hobbies. Who is your favorite team? In football, uh, well, uh, you're talking about uh, the English Premier League, or yeah. um, no? Uh, well, I support. Sorry, I go ahead. Manchester United, I think so. You are a fan of Manchester. No, I, United. I, I support uh, Arsenal. I've been uh, okay. a long time <laughs> Arsenal supporter. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I just want to know about your daily routine. Uh, well, as I said, uh, my daily routine involves me going, uh, completing whatever projects I have. Uh, these projects may involve uh, various contracts, uh, pen testing contracts that I have, uh, working through uh, through them with the team. And then, of course, I'm I also have uh, the Hackexploit company, which I manage, and uh, we are currently getting into you know education uh, quite a bit and creating educational content either through our, our academy or YouTube. So my daily routine begins with me uh, getting up, analyzing what needs to be done during the day, uh, coming down with the, coming up with the deliverables for the day. So th these are the things that I need to do on that day, regardless of what happens. So I start off by taking a look at my inbox, anything that needs to be classified as important or not important. I get that done as, as soon as possible. And then I begin with my main projects and my main projects can take anywhere from four to eight hours, depending on exactly what we're doing, whether I'm working on a, uh, I'm actually going to the, uh, to the premises myself or with the team. Uh, we are conducting our assessments, our system audits. And then of course, uh, when I'm done with that, I then get back uh, to my office or I go home and I then begin working on hack exploit uh, either you know, the YouTube videos or the courses that we're currently working on. So that's primarily how, how my day alternates. Okay. So my next question is, besides your job or professional work, how do you manage YouTube? Um, well, it, it's, it's usually is quite difficult, especially given that we have such a large channel, we usually have to produce quite a bit of, uh, of content because uh, of, of the large audience. But the way I've seen it is, again, we typically have to have, as I said, a minimum uh, in, in terms of what we, we need to do every week. So if I'm having a, a very busy week, I ensure that after I'm complete uh, or I'm done with my main projects, then I have a certain amount of time always dedicated towards YouTube. So I can, I, I can always focus on the content there. So I usually try and have a dedicated before I start the week, maybe 10 hours or 15 hours for YouTube. And I schedule it on a day like Friday or Saturday, and then I can work on YouTube on those two days. Uh, and that's just personally for me because my projects can get quite extensive and I can find myself working on the same project from Monday to Wednesday. And I have to ensure that I have enough time left off at the end of the week to work on YouTube as well so that it doesn't eat off in, into that time. How was your feeling when you hit 100k subscribers on YouTube and you get the silver play button? Uh, well, <laughs> that, that's another interesting story because uh, I, we actually got our play button when, we, when I hit, I think, 300k. Okay. The reason for that is because we actually got a community guideline strike uh, just before we hit 100k. So we weren't able to get the, uh, the, the subscribe button. Um, uh, but, but as I said, I really wasn't focused on that. It was just a proud moment for me because uh, we had hit such a large milestone in regards to the community at large growing. It meant that more people are getting into InfoSec, which is exactly what we wanted. It means that more people are, are, are getting educated in these topics. And again, it, it, for us, it, it meant that we have now a, a you know, much higher responsibility or larger responsibility to you know, provide even better content, more informational content. Yeah. We are waiting for a golden play button also. Yeah, hopefully if, uh, if YouTube doesn't give us too many strikes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. So my next question is, do you do bug bounties or CTF on a daily basis? Or what do you like do more and why? So basically, uh, do you like CTFs more or a bug bounties? Right. Um, I, I like doing both. I, I, I would say that I like bug bounties more. I get into bug bounties whenever I have free time in the evenings or at night. 
Um, I typically try and do at least two hours a day if I can, but on most days I usually don't have enough time. So I, I, I find myself doing bug bounties and CTFs on the weekend. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, cause I have much more free time. Um, in regards to, you know, CTFs and bug bounties, I find that they're, they're both very different in that, uh, you know, CTFs are there to teach you how to use tools, to teach you about methodology, right? And how to look for problems, how to look for misconfigurations. But most of the times, CTFs usually focus on, uh, on getting the flag, which I think is, is, is quite different from bug bounties. We're not looking for a flag. You're looking for a misconfiguration. You're looking for a flaw. Uh, something that you can exploit, something that has been configured uh, incorrectly, a flaw with 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 the you know the the software, the piece of software being used, whether it's a CMS or or anything like that. Um, so I find myself doing bug bounties more because that's where I'm really experienced. Uh, CTFs are are to me you know set up very differently and have very different goals, but there are some very good ones that cover you know real world vulnerabilities that you're likely to come in contact with. Okay, so just a quick answer questions. What is your favorite platform, HackerOne or BugCrowd? I like BugCrowd. Your favorite vulnerability? Just to like favorite. two hours, vulnerability, just to quick hunting on and you have expertise on it. CSRF. Okay, your highest bounty? Highest bounty, probably eight, $800, I think. Okay, okay, thank you. So my next question is any advice for young cybersecurity aspirants, young cybersecurity students or professionals? Right. Uh, uh, given that we have a lot of, of uh, new, uh, you know, new people or new students joining in, um, I think what I would recommend to them is to, is to understand and to, to learn the fundamentals beco- before they get into any of the advanced stuff. Because it's, it's something that I've seen quite a bit over the last maybe one or two years is that the people getting into cybersecurity or InfoSec uh, really get overwhelmed by how much there is to learn or how much there is that they can learn. And they, they, they usually try and do too many things at once. So, uh, you know, if I tell them to get started with networking, they'll maybe, you know, look at networking for one or two days and then they'll skip over to, uh, to a tool like Nmap, and then they don't understand how TCP is different from UDP. And then I said, well, did you learn about networking? And they say, no, I didn't. So the fundamentals will set up everything else, right? So if, if you're very good at the fundamentals, you'll be able to get into everything else. And, and I've seen this with professionals that maybe have been system administrators and are very good at Linux, very good at networking. They can get into the InfoSec industry in one or two years and they'll be full professionals by the end of those two years because everything makes sense to them. They understand you know, what TCP is. They understand the OSI model. They understand the Linux kernel. They understand about uh, Windows, how about PowerShell, about bash scripting. So it's much easier for them to get into that. So again, I would recommend get understanding the fundamentals and you know take your time to, to to actually iron out any of the issues you're having currently. They, 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 there's no harm in experimenting with CTFs, and CTFs will tell you a lot about what you don't know. So definitely go ahead and use CTFs to tell you about what you don't know and then improve those areas, but focus on the fundamentals and the essentials first. Okay. So thank you. Uh, can you give some quick short points related to path? If anyone wants to become an ethical hacker, just basic terms like which topics you learn first, something kind of a short summary. Right. Um, so I, I would recommend uh, learning about uh, Linux and Windows. When I say that, I mean, in terms of Linux, learn how to use the terminal, bash scripting. When it comes down to Windows, Active Directory, uh, setting up Windows yourself, PowerShell scripting, and, and uh, it, they're, they're, you learn about exploitation and then privilege escalation. I would also recommend learning in regards to networking about TCP and UDP, the OSI model, learning about tools like Wireshark for traffic analysis and capture so that you understand uh, you know, w- how packets are sent and what's being sent within the packets. And then, uh, of course, after you've, you've got that uh, down, then you can start moving into you know, system exploitation in regards to you know, custom exploitation or manual exploitation, where you take a look at exploits that other people have written that you know, target particular services, understand how they're working, understand buffer, buffer overflows, so on and so forth. 
And then, of course, it's going to depend on what, what path you want to take. Are you focused on web app security? Are you focused on network security? Are you focused on web app security? I would recommend learning JavaScript, PHP, uh, MySQL, and other database, uh, other relational databases that are out there, understanding how they work in regards to PHP, SQL injection, stuff like that. And uh, yeah, that, that, that's what I would recommend, uh, generally speaking, to get started. Mm, yeah, that's a good thing because I always tell something like if you can control the code, you control the world. Absolutely. <laughs> because, because if you know how the sign up or sign in uh, panel, how to code, just attack like how to how you can bypass it, and yeah, then you have to revise it how to secure it. Then it comes to yeah. secure code because if you know how to attack and know how to secure, a wonderful. Absolutely. If it, if you know SQL queries work, then it's very easy to exploit it or to find vulnerabilities within the, you know, the sign up form of, or the, the login form. Yeah. Okay. So my lastly, any advice that you think should tell any beginner who wants to start bug hunting because right now bug hunting is in trending field of the cyber security because of this COVID because many people are coming. Right. Um, any tips? Uh, as I said, it, it will depend on your skill level and your experience level. Uh, I would recommend learning about the vulnerabilities in the OWASP top 10. So learning about cross-site scripting, how it's exploited, why it's being exploited, about input filtering, uh, learning about all of these vulnerabilities. And then, of course, uh, through this experimentation, you learn about the, the vulnerabilities that you're good at or the ones that you like. And then I would recommend reading reports for those particular vulnerabilities that you're interested in. For example, if you're interested in cross-site scripting, look at the reports that have been submitted you know, for cross-site scripting bug bounties, and then uh, you learn a lot from there. And then of course, the last step is to just, is to just keep on doing it, right? Because uh, again, to become a bug, bug bounty hunter, you need to be bug bounty hunting, right? It's a very simple thing. If you're practicing, eventually you'll become good enough. So yeah. yeah. So now some quick rapid fire. Your sure. favorite movies or series related to hacking? Uh, hacking movies. Um, I, I don't. I, I don't really. I haven't watched any hacking movies, so I probably have to say The Matrix or anything like that. Have you, it's the have you watched? Have you watched Mr. Robot? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, I have watched Mr. Robot. It's a very, very good show. Very accurate to set to a certain extent. Yeah, that's a good show. Okay, so your favorite add-ons when it comes to a bug bounty or something kind of related to work. Your favorite add-ons related to Chrome or Firefox? Uh, I, I, I don't really uh, have any particular add-ons. Uh, the only add-on that I find myself constantly setting up is built with or Wapalize and then uh, Foxy Proxy for Burp Suite. Yeah. Okay. So any tips from your side? Do you want to say anything? Um, well, what, what I would like to say is, uh, um, I, 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 I think I'll just address it generally speaking is that uh, the, the cybersecurity community is growing rapidly, which is a great thing. It's a very, very large industry that has a lot of demand, but at the same time, there's a lot of demand for skilled talent or uh, for skilled individuals. So that's something you need to take, everyone needs to take seriously. You need to become skilled. You need to, you need to learn, uh, you know, you need to master your craft. And as I said, people should stop looking for shortcuts because I've seen a lot of that, even in regards to bug bounties, they want to learn bug bounty hunting in a week or a month, which is, generally speaking is too short. You need to look at it as a process instead of looking at the, at the final goal or what you want to achieve, whether it's the money or whatever the case, whatever's motivating you, that's perfectly fine. But you need to respect the process and the way of getting there or the way to get there. So I would say uh, learn from others, but also uh, follow your own path, understand where you want to go. Uh, and uh, as, as I said, just understand that it's a process. It's not going to take 24 hours you know, it's, it's going to take more than that. It's going to take dedication and eventually you'll get there. Yeah. Okay. So thank you so much for creating a lot of content. Uh, my, one of my favorite channels from your hackers Pride is one of my favorite channel when I started into the cybersecurity. Okay. So thank you for the, giving the lots of content to the community. 
so guys that's it for today i would like to thank alexis ahmed a kahak exploit to joining this cyber talk and sharing your knowledge i hope you guys learn a lot okay because he has an experience of 6 plus 7 years in infosec okay so guys if you have any doubt you can ask in the comments and if you like this video press the thumbs up so uh, i give the youtube channel link of hack exploit in the description and even in the here is also display and uh, hack exploit is also have an academy hack exploit dot academy sorry, sorry. hack exploit dot academy so you can guys yeah. go, go and watch it out the courses you like okay but lots of free content is available on the channel like nmap wireshark web security watching and sharing it's just Absolutely. need to the content creator okay like wh whatever we are creating just go and just we never need such likes and comments okay all right thank you very much for having me on okay so guys this is pratik davi over and out hello